Right, welcome back. So in this video, we will have a look at the last two functions in the user service. So you can see that we still need to do logging out a user, and we also need to do reset password for the user. So let's start with logging out the user. So in order to log out a user, we've got this string result equals OK, and we're going to have that show user progress again, and we're going to set that to true. And we want to also show that text. So it's going to be that user progress text. And let's set this text to busy signing or logging you out. Please wait. And then we need to notify the listeners. So we're just going to show that app progress indicator again to show the user that we're busy doing something. Right, in order to sign out a user, we will don't need to get back a specific value, so we're just going to use a specific function in the user service called logout. And again, because I'm using the await keyword, this function must also be asynchronous. So it's going to be await back in list dot user service again, and you'll see there is a login and a logout. So for the logout, there's also an error that you can catch in here. So again, we're just going to handle that error. And for this error, we will just say result equals error dot to string. Okay, so it's very easy to log out a user. Uh, we start showing the progress. Say busy signing you out. Please wait. Notify the listeners. We go to the user service called logout, and that logs out the user. If something went wrong, we will save that as part of the result. Then after this, we can just go to show the user progress, set that to false again. So it stops showing. And then we go to notify the listeners so that we actually remove it on the UI. And that's it. That's everything we need to log out a user. Now, this is only in the user service. So let's go to the helper class there. And let's just see where we log out the user. There we will log out the user in the UI. So let's see how we're going to do this one. Right, so as part of this function, the first thing we want to do is to get that result to see if we successfully logged out a user. And we're going to call that function, so it's going to be context.read. We want to read from the user service class again, and we want to call logout user. Okay, so that will log out the user, and if there's any error, it will return back result. So just remember, it will return back either OK there at the top, or the error that occurred. So if we go back there, that's what we will get there. So let's test. If the result is equal to OK, then there's a few things that we want to do. So the first thing I want to do is to set the current user to null. So if you go back to your user service, you will see that right at the top somewhere, there we've got it, we set the current user to null. So we're going to set current user equal to the null value there. So we want to call this function. Okay, so we're going to do the following. We're going to say context dot read. Again, we want to read from the user service. And we want to call the function there that's called set the current user to null. Then we're also going to call navigator dot pop and push named. And the route that we want to go to now is using the route manager. And we want to go to the login page. So if we log out the user, we want to take him back to the login page. Right, and then the else part here is if everything we did not go okay with that result, then we can just go to show the snack bar and we can show that result as an error message. Right, so if we have a look at our app again, you will see that where we want to call this logout user in the UI is actually when we click on this button there. So this is in the to do page. And when we click on it, you can see we logged out the user. So let's just go to that to do page again. Uh, let's go to pages and go to the to do page. And let's just see if we've got that. Yes, you can see that inside of this icon button that says exit to app, we've got in the on pressed logout user in UI. And that's why we arrived now on the screen. So by clicking that button there, we get back to the screen. Okay, so we can just log again. So it's going to be chuck at gmail.com. And let's make it uh, one, two, three, the password again. And let's log in the user. The user is logged in. And if we click there, 
we will be logging out the user. But you can see no progress bar is showing. Right, so in the to-do page, let's go to the bottom. At the end of the stack, we will add our selector here again. So I'm going to say selector. I'm just going to remove all of this so that I create it myself. Uh, just put a comma there. And the type of this selector will then be, again, the user service. And we're going to use that tuple 2. For the selector, we're going to have the context and the value that will be returning back a tuple 2 with two items. And the value is that user service class. And we want to look at the show user progress. Let me just remove this phone quickly. And for item two, we want to go to value dot user progress text. Okay, so we've explained that part now. Let's add the builder. So for the builder, we're gonna have a context, we're gonna have a value, and we're gonna have the child. And for this one, we will have the opening and closing brace. Again, we will be returning back based on this first value of the tuple, which will be item one, and that is show user progress. So if the show user progress is true, we're going to show the app progress indicator, and the text will be value.item2, which will be the user progress text. Otherwise, we will be showing just an empty container. Right, we can save this one. Let's get back the phone here and see if we run this. Let's just rerun this again. Okay, so let's just log in again. I'm going to say chuck at gmail.com. Let's enter the password, one, two, three. I'm going to say login. It's busy logging me in. If I click on log out, busy signing you out, and I'm back at the login page. The next part of this video, we will quickly do the reset password here. Right, so for the reset password, we will go to user service again, and let's just find that function called reset password. Where is it? Right at the top somewhere. There we go. Reset password, we pass in the username that we want to reset the password for. Again, we're going to show the user progress, set it to true. We will use that user progress text and set that to busy sending reset instructions. Please wait. And we will notify all the listeners. Now again, very easy to do. You're just gonna say await, go to back endless, user service, and you're gonna call the restore password function. And you can see what it wants is the identity. So in our case, our username, which is the email address, is the identity. So you're gonna pass in restore password to the restore password function, you're gonna pass in the username. In our case, it's the email address. If there's any error that occurs, let me just remove the phone again. If there's any errors, uh, let me just replace this again with an opening and a closing brace. We're going to set our result equal to error dot to string. Right, so that is how you restore your password. In our case, I think for this specific error, we can use the, it could still throw this one that says unable to find a user with a specified identity. So I think for this reset password, Instead of just saying error.toString, let's call that get human readable error and we pass in error.toString. Okay, so that we can catch that error as well. Right, then after this, we can stop showing the progress. So we set it to false. We notify the listeners and we return the result. And that's all we need to do. So to reset the password, it's just this user service.restore password passing in the identity, which is our username or the email address of the user. And it, the user will automatically get reset password instructions sent to his email address. Okay, so this is now inside of the user service, the reset password, but we need to do it also in the helper class. So in the helper class, there's the reset password. So what we're going to do is we're going to just send the context and we need a required email address there that we need to send through. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do in here is to check if the email is empty. Then we're going to show the snack bar with a message. Please enter your email address. We can maybe add also then click the reset password again. Let's make it on. Click on reset password again. Okay, so if the email is empty, 
then we're going to show that message. The else part is the email is not empty and we need to send or call that function now inside of the user service. So for that, we have a result that we need to take check against. So I'm going to say result equals await. And that is why this is an asynchronous function also, because now we need to call that function inside of the user service. So it's going to be context.read. We want to read from the user service. And the function we want to use there is reset password. We need to pass in the username there, which will be the email that was passed in right there. But let's just trim it to make sure. Right, and that's all we need. Now we have the result and we can go and check against that result. So we're going to check if the result is equal to OK. Let's show a snack bar there. And we can say something like successfully sent password reset. Please check your mail or check your email or something like that. Right. The else part will be the result is not okay. So that could be that the username doesn't exist or maybe misspelled something or whatever there. So we will just go and show the snack bar again and the message will be our result. Right, and we can save that. Let's just go to, so if you look at the app again, let me just bring in the phone again. If you look at the app, where do we have that reset password? That is where we have the reset password. So it's on the login screen. So let's just go to the login screen quickly and just see if that one, the reset password, you can see an on pressed is not done yet. So we need to complete this one as well. Right, very easy to do. We're just going to call that reset password in UI and we need to pass in the email. And as part of this, we've got an email, an email as a username, username controller dot text. We just pass in the username controller dot text. So we could have used the trim method here and then we don't need to have it inside of the helper class, but it's up to you how you want to do it. So the reset password in UI, um, we've got username controller.txt and you can see by having these helper classes, we are actually taking away a lot in the UI and handling that somewhere else. Right, that seems fine. So let's run this quickly again. And I'm just gonna click on reset password. Please enter your email address, then click. Okay, so I'm gonna enter email address. Let's say chuck at gmail.com. Now, I don't know if somebody's got the email address of chuck.email at gmail.com, but uh, I'm going to send a reset instruction for him and successfully sent. Right, so you can check this out with your own email address. If it's something that doesn't exist, uh, let's just see that one. Reset password. Your email address does not exist. Please check for spelling mistakes. And that comes from where? If we go to the user service class, you will see that it comes from this human readable error. Uh, this one, your email address does not exist in our database. Please check for spelling mistakes. Okay, and that is it for resetting the password, logging in a user, keeping the user logged in. So if you run this again, The user will be kept login, and you can also log out a user, signing it out. Running it again will not now keep the user logged in, and it will be back at the welcome screen. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.